Hi, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this episode is entitled, What About Me? As I was relaxing this morning, I didn't feel moved to write. I have settled in my heart that I will not speak on my platforms unless it is given by God. In the book of Ezekiel, the prophet wasn't even allowed to speak anything of himself. God caused him to be mute. The Spirit imparted to me that those who claim to speak a word from the Lord must know that this is never to be taken lightly. Ezekiel was told that if he did not warn the wicked or righteous man who turned from God, his very soul would be required. What stood out to me is that even if Ezekiel did not warn them, they would ultimately die in their sin anyway. When I inquired of the Lord, he explained to me that a man's spirit bears witness against his soul so that there is no excuse. Having mentioned this before, I want to expound that the Lord manifested himself to Ezekiel in a vision in all his glory. Ezekiel was not only troubled by what he was to tell the people, but he was also bitter and did not want to do it. He sat for seven days because of the magnitude of the task before him. God allowed it, but afterward, he told Ezekiel to get up and do what was commanded of him. What compelled me to write to you is something that is overlooked by people every day. The blatant disregard for the feelings of our creator. God directed Ezekiel to shave his head and eat food cooked over cow manure after Ezekiel humbly objected originally commanded to eat this food cooked over human excrement. He had to lie on his left side for 390 days, then on his right side for 40 days, physically restrained by God, unable to move, while eating small amounts of food and water measured out to him over this time. Now, there will be some of you who may ignorantly take the scriptures out of context and ask why would a loving God treat him in this manner? The short and simple answer and reason for Ezekiel's bitterness, God did it for them to save their souls from his righteous judgments. With warnings and extremely intense graphic parallels, God alerts us before we are no longer salvageable. When you look at the severity of the situation, do you still doubt his love for you? Because as I read this, we are seeing the behavior of the same God who sent his only begotten son to die for you and me. Innocent men who loved God so much that they were willing to suffer immense abuse, torture, and persecution. Yet people in their finite minds will attempt to blame God for having to reap the consequences of their own actions. An aspect of God that is overlooked is how our sin hurts him. His judgment is fierce, but brought on by our lust and misdeeds. Doomed for one third to die by violent disease, one third by famine, and one third by the sword. Fathers would even eat their sons and the sons would eat their fathers. Their abominations were so grievous that they were to be slain amid all the idols and false gods that they served, who being man-made, even as we see today, or figments of vile imaginations are unable to save any man alive. But this spoke volumes to me also, so I want you to ponder in your spirit what I am about to share with you. Proving his love and that even in all of the calamity that we bring on ourselves, his mercy endures forever. 
in that he has never wiped us out completely, no matter how deserving we are. Our unconscionable natures are corroborated against us every day in the news alone. People are assassinated for naught and for circumstances that are beyond their control. Children are kidnapped, tortured, raped, and murdered. We are vain, greedy, selfish, narcissistic, impudent, and callous toward others. But take heed and see the proclivity of the Lord. It is written, Then those who escape will remember me among the nations to which they will be exiled. How I have been broken by their lewdness and their adulterous hearts, which have turned away from me, and by their eyes which lust after their idols. And they will loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed for all their repulsive acts. That's Ezekiel 6, 9 of the Amplified Version. In that scripture, the Lord was crushed, severed and fragmented by our actions and the intents of our hearts. Let me give you another reminder of God's goodness. When he first created Adam and Eve, there was no need to toil the ground. Everything that they needed was given to them. Do you understand? They wanted nothing. And for those who would blame Eve, I can assure you that if it wasn't her, Satan would have deceived someone else. After all, Cain committed the first murder of his brother. So let us take accountability for our own decisions. This is why I am a faithful advocate of working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Jesus is the perfect father. And no matter how you twist it or pile a bunch of foolishness in there while mixing it with deceit and lies so that you may think that you will absolve yourself, the truth will always prevail. Remember that since all have sinned and continually fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23 of the Amp Amplified Version, the caveat, therefore, is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he has stretched forth his hand against them and has smitten him. And the hills did tremble and their carcasses were torn in the middle of the streets. Now listen carefully. For all his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still, meaning he is still beckoning to us. That is Isaiah 5, 25 of the King James Version. Always coming from a place of love. Thank you.